Hit it. Oh my, that has some recoil. Hi everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flitter Mouse. Today we're going to take a few shots with the Kontaroff Universal Bullets. You may remember the slug on the left, the UPK-2. Yeah, it's got the same name. Uh, we're going to be calling the one on the right, the one we're shooting today, the UPK-2 Heavy. Now we had excellent results with the 30 gram version that we filmed a couple months ago. So we expect to have good results with this heavier version as well. Now these were sent to us from Russia by Aceton and he sent three other types of slugs that we've already shot so this is the final set now the reason they're called a universal slug is because you should be able to shoot these out of a smoothbore shotgun and also through a rifle choke which is popular in russia and they call those a paradox nozzle first we'll take a couple shots with the rifle choke hit it Ooh, he hit it look at the spin on that <laughs> Now we filmed these two shots a couple months ago and it was just to make sure that my powder load was correct before I committed all the slugs to the same powder load. UPK 232 grains, long shot. I'm ready whenever you are. There, there, it, is. there it is. It looks like my powder load's pretty good. I load these things up pretty hot and look at that shock wave traveling along the ground. That's pretty cool. But remember, these are universal slugs, so we want to test them without any rifling and see if they're just as accurate. All right, Jeff and the OG here, ready to send down range the UPK-2. This is the heavier big brother to the UPK. So uh, straight out of Russia. Very accurate slug. We did some amazing accuracy work with them last time. Let's see what they'll do on this heavier version. Hey, hit it! Right on the little boy. Dang it! Wow! Hit it! Oh my, that has some recoil. Hit it! Yep, because it tore right through there. Left a little bit of blue smear in there where the tape used to be. Yeah. Cut right through and right into the Russian ballistic gelatin. Wow. And you can, so. com you can compare what the other slugs have done to this thing. Yep. And that thing... That, that slug is strong like bull. <laughs> Strong like bear. <laughs> Got a couple pretty rugged looking gummy bears, but hey, they're gummy bears. Woo! Okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. Ready, here we go. Holy crap! <laughs> Nothing left of that thing. They don't like, they're too hard to smash with hammers, but a Russian slug, oh boy. Okay, I'm ready. Jeez. Wow, that one got thrown out there. Yeah, we got the uh, trailer hitch. Right there on the uh, orange triangle, right? Yeah, it's got it marked, whenever you're ready. All right, here we go. Ooh. Ooh. I think that hit it. You have a hole? I don't know if it made it through. Okay, it's rare that anything goes through this thing. Yeah, not a lot of rounds make a make a hole through that steel. That is some heavy, heavy steel. It is steel. It's not aluminum or anything. As far as we can tell, it hit right where the blue tape was stuck. Yep. Left a cool little hole. It, I see a little finger. I see a little finger. Okay. So, <laughs> world's largest trailer hitch. Oh, it weighs 20 pounds. Strap on steel plate and go to battle. Okay. Kuskla. Wow. Oh, you hear that clang? Yeah. That uh, blue that, blood came back. Yeah, I saw that too. Half the distance. Kuskla. Wow. Oh, good Put a pretty good dent on there, man. Yeah. Very nice. You would hurt heart. A lot of lead splattering of our new bungee cod. <laughs> 31 yards, 29 meters yes. against Doug Ski. Okay, hit it again. Woo. Man, you hear that clang? Yeah. Woo. First one, second one. Little tiny vase, 31 yards out. 
Oh, oh first try. I'll be damned. All right, I'm ready. Oh, over. Oh, over. Okay, take one more. Is that the last one? This is the last one. Last one. You may survive <laughs> another day. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, bingo. And the dirt embankment. I like it, I like it. Look at those white eyes, he looks like Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> Got him right in the side of the torso. Oh my. Oh. I'll be able to sell that in the garage sale now. Scar Joe arm off. <laughs> oh, he's a he has, he has binoculars. Oh wow. There you go. That's some high grade ones. Wow. Now the shot on the lead plate was very impressive. Everything uh, worked perfectly. It was accurate. And very few slugs that we have tested have blown through that thing. So that was good. And the shot on the ballistic gel gummy bears, also very textbook, very impressive. In fact, if you were to look at all the shots that Greg took, they all look pretty good, except the one missed shot at, what, 31 yards at that little weird alien thing. So it'd be easy to blame the shooter just for a near miss like that, right? But reviewing the high-speed footage, we can see that we have a malfunction there where the plastic uh, tail assembly is completely detached from the lead nose. Now this shot we can clearly see all three pieces of the slug flying independently. Interesting how the one piece gets sucked into that hole by the vacuum of the lead slug flying ahead of it. Despite losing its stabilizer tail, the lead slug flying just on its own flew remarkably well. You wouldn't have even known there was a problem if you didn't have a high speed camera to review it on. Okay, this is the front one, right? Yep, that's the front. The uh, wadding stuck right in there in the, in the wad hole. Oh, there it is. But the, uh, look at that, look at that cavity. Nice clean hole. And then, uh, look at that, went through <laughs> and bent the crap out of that thing. Wow, that's a lot of force. Almost. So, all that information just poured right out there. All those figures and facts. All the Russian collusions. Yep. <laughs> wow. Well, I don't think we can recover that data. <laughs> Again, the lead section in this shot came detached from the plastic stabilizer piece. Um, still, the slug was very accurate. Kind of acting like a foster slug, I guess, in this situation. But this is only 10 yards away, so let's take a look at the 31 yard shot and see how that looks. You always tell when I've been out in the sun too long and my focus starts suffering on my camera shots. But at least I got good focus on the flight of the slug. Um, you can see that the accuracy just was not very good on that shot. Now in contrast, this shot also at 31 yards at this little tiny vase was very accurate. The very last shot on the alien guy, the slug didn't fall apart, so it was very accurate too. So what's going on with these? We didn't have these problems at all when we shot the 30 gram lighter versions. Now on this version of the slugs, the heavy version, it's very easy to pull that lead section off. I just pulled it off with my hands. Now we only saw the failures occurring when we shot it without the rifle choke. I'm surprised all of them didn't fail in fact. Now if we look at the 30 gram version, I can't even get it to twist with all my might. So that's pretty clear why the 30 grams were so successful. Now this is my rifle choke and it's a pretty tight squeeze. So it must need that in order to compress the lead around the plastic stem of the, the stabilizer to keep it held together. So it's not the spin that's making these more accurate. It's just the fact that going through that rifle choke keeps the slugs from falling apart. And when they hold together, then they're very accurate. They shot pretty good without any spin, right? Well, how do you like those subversive apples?